And so that's what really matters. And there's a very wise man that once said that true humility isn't thinking less of yourselves, it's thinking of yourselves less. And so a lot of people misunderstand what it means to be humble. And what humility actually is, the best symbol to identify humility is the wolf. The wolf is the leader of the pack, kind of like these two young men here, Kevin and Matt G. Intergenerational influence. This has to do with creating something bigger than yourself. Something bigger than the size and scope of who you are and just you and yourself. And so intergenerational influence is something that I use to describe Kevin and Matt G. This is making a goal past your own lifetime. You know, my, my business has only been uh, been around for two years. June 2014 is when it started. So, uh, really, my entrepreneurial age is still very young. So, it's exciting to see where where we're going to be in to, you know 10 years and and a few more book launches from now. I'm sure uh, you know we're going to look back at tonight and kind of laugh at where we were. Or, you know, whatever. So, uh, I'd like to say to take one final minute. My parents are sitting right here. Um, I just want to say a special thank you to these guys. Uh, my parents are amazing. Um, my dad thought I was crazy when I told him I was going to quit my job. Uh, uh, there I was, you know, working for the government. Uh, you know, I could have coasted in that job, made 60 grand a year for the rest of my life with my pension, and retired at 65, but I would have been miserable. And uh, my parents saw it, and, um, you know, they've supported me more than I could even tell anybody right now. So these are my two big supporters right here, and thank you for being here tonight. I love you guys. Without further ado, let's bring Michelle up and uh, let's hear a bit about Habitat for Humanity and uh, where money is. So, so it's true. Mandy calls me, and we get calls, you know, a couple times a week. We'll get a call, yeah, I got this great idea, and we're going to raise some money. And we're like, yeah, it's harder than it looks, you know. <laughs> and, and so, you know, we build about 25 houses a year, and so Mandy calls me and says, Michelle, we got this great idea, we got this book, it's not done. But we want to give all the proceeds to you. I'm like, okay, cool, yeah, come on in. So we'll entertain any opportunity. We've had a guy come in and says, I'm a, I'm a doctor. I work with Palo Care, but I'm a musician, and I'm going to do the CD. And he raised like almost twenty thousand dollars on the CD as a, as a musician, and he's a doctor by, by day. So Mandy and I think I don't know Kevin. Did you come the first time? Yeah, it was, yeah it was the first time, yeah. I can't remember when I met Mandy first. So about six months ago, they come in there and they're like, ready to go. They didn't look like that. They didn't have suits on. They just had really cool jeans and shoes on. And I had this swag about them that I really liked. So I was like, come on in. So they're telling me about this book. I'm like, I'm in. Like, I didn't even care when the book was done. I said, we're in. We want to do this with you. We want to partner with you because we want to partner with people who want to make a difference. Because that's what Habitat is. We're about creating a hand up for people that couldn't otherwise, you know, they're just, they're doing good things. Like our families have full-time jobs, uh, they have good credit, uh, they just don't make enough money. They're making, you know, under between twenty six dollars to $60,000 a year. And when you think about 60, somebody says, 60, that's a lot of money. And I said, yeah, but they have to have like five or six children to be in that poverty scale. So, so our families just are looking for a hand up. No different than what you do when you go to your coaching session with Angie. And Valen, I mean, they go, they're just giving you a hand up to be great. And, and the fact that they want to give the proceeds back to a cause that is doing very similar things about what they're doing and everything really makes me want to um, be a partner with them. And you know, when I think about my life, I'm quite a bit older than them. And I'm like, you know, there's this crazy thing like when my dad was at the end of his life and I was working for a, a publicly traded company, I was making a very good living. and I wasn't happy, and I'd watch him in his final days, and he, it didn't matter about how much money, he was very successful, he was a prof for 32 years, he had his tenure, he was very well respected, was a dean of the university of his faculty, but it wasn't about that, it was about what he did that he wanted people to remember him by. He didn't want it to be about how much money in his bank, he wanted to make sure that his family was looked after, but it wasn't about uh, the things that he did or didn't do, he wanted people to remember him for things. So I said, that's it, I'm changing my future. And so I got this job working for uh, a nonprofit that changes people's lives every day. So I get to go to work every day and change people's futures. And I think that's kind of cool. So, so up till last year, we've helped 
346 families, which means over a thousand children in Manitoba have a better future. And typically what happens is these kids go on, when they move into a habitat house, they, they go on to get a better education. They do great things. So if they were to look at, when you talk about the kids that uh, are in care through the youth center or the foster care system, man, they probably have come from poverty. And so what we're trying to do is create a stable home environment for them to have a better future. And they will go on to get an education. They will go on to probably read real estate uh, success stories. And, and I bet you one of them, as soon as they hear about this book, they're going to be part of that teammate. So, so that's what we, I can guarantee it. <laughs> so we have to write. So I'm going to tell you a little story because I think that storytelling is what you do every day. And is, is, is how you change people's lives. So I'm going to tell you about Frances. And Frances was a mom, she was a wife, uh, she's from Sierra Leone, and she was a journalist. And as you know, what goes on in Sierra Leone is the government doesn't like it when you object to what they're doing. And she wrote a controversial story about it, and it was printed uh, in the middle of the night. The government came for her in their trucks, and her husband heard them, and he said, You need to leave, they're coming for you. So she went out in the middle of the night. I mean, and there's no street lights in where they live, right? She's in the middle of the night and she escapes. Within, you know, 10 minutes, she hears two gunshots. They killed her husband, they killed her brother-in-law, and they took the six children. And so she escaped. She became, uh, they caught her, and she was a victim of, of war. So you can imagine what that might look like. She was tortured and all of those things. She ended up, they ended up releasing her, they did what they wanted to do with her, they released her. She went to a refugee camp, two years later she found her kids, they walked right by her. So you can imagine that, like, what was that going to look like for her? So she gets sponsored by the Canadian government to come to Canada. She ends up in Winnipeg of all places, right? It's cold, she comes in the middle of winter, it's January, she gets off a plane with her six kids, and she ends up in Winnipeg. So this church sponsored her, or took her in and, and worked with her, and about five years later, she is, she is buying her first home, her first habitat home. She heard about habitat, she got a job, she worked full time, and now she has uh, her six kids. So four of her kids have gone on to get university degrees. One's a doctor, one's in criminal justice. I'm not sure what the other ones, but they're doing great things. But because of people like Randy, and because you bought a book today, or if you haven't, Candace and Donna are over there, they want to sell you a book. Um, that is what's gonna, I suppose you're going to change someone's life like that. So, so they're not, not all stories are like that, but a lot of our families are refugees and they've come to Canada for a better future and, and you can be a part of that. So I can tell you all about the business model, which we can do that in another day, but, but that's what really matters. It's about helping families that really want to help themselves. So, so I appreciate Mandy and, and Kevin for doing what they do and look forward to that $175,000 because that's what it costs us to build a house. Yeah. So. Uh, oh, how I love this wedge of self-doubt. And so that's something that you have to take and pluck from your mind. And you'll be able to do any single thing like what these two are doing. And what everyone here, we've all done some amazing things that we cherish. In order to actually do whatever that was, we had to take and go like this and pluck that wedge of self-doubt out from our ear or wherever other hole you want to take it out of. And so that's the wedge of self-doubt. And so what I'm trying to uh, get across to you is that you have to increase your self-worth in order to eliminate that doubt and become someone that has and is able to exemplify their own definition of success. Success isn't money. Success isn't any one thing in particular. Success is what you deem is success. But people still want this and they still place value on this $20 bill. So again, it's not how to count or, or such things like that, it, it's what counts. So people don't want money or products or services, they want what the money buys. They want what the product or service allows them to experience. So who was first back there? I don't know who was jumping around. Who was actually the first one that actually raised their hand? There's that lady back there. It was Mary. Mary, yeah, it's, it's yours, Mary. Okay, so come up here and wave your hands like you're on uh, at a board show. <laughs> Price is right, yeah, that's what it is. So you got yourself a book there. So, so basically the, the moral of the story is that when you make the decision to give, when you make the decision to invest your time, energy, and money into something that matters to you, 
You make the decision and you vote each and every day about the kind of community, city, and country you want to live in. So I want to leave you with one more thing before I invite Manjeet to close off the night. I want to ask you a question. What do you want to make? Just call it out. What do you want to make? Whoever has an answer to that, just yell it out. On that table over there, what do you want to make? Just yell it out. Well, what else? What do you want to make? Let's make history. <laughs> oh, I'm so <laughs> my <laughs> Anyways, you, you know sorry, sorry. <laughs> you copy. So that's what I'm going to say. What do you want to make? You want to make well? You want to make not what he said yet? Or do you want to make something else? Right? Do you want to make good money? Do you want to make a fortune? Right? Do you want to make a difference? Or do you want to do what Tony does and make history? So thanks for doing my punchline, buddy. <laughs> but yeah, so make history, everyone. Thanks for coming out. And I'll let Matty take the mic here. It's so funny that, you know, most people's success, um, you know, it's really by who you spend your time with. They always say, you're the average of the five top people you, you associate with, right? Negative or positive. And uh, that's so true because we're so influenced by environment, people, and it's just so subtle that you don't even notice it. And sometimes until it's too late, uh, you can all obviously tell uh, Vero is a wealth of knowledge, you know. He's, um, one of my mentors, we had you know people talking about uh, Kevin and I, but you know what? It's it's not just us. It's the people that uh, we listen to. You know, uh, like one of our pastors here. You know, one of our mentors in the back. You know, Bill and countless people that are just feeding into Kevin or I, uh, or even Valen, right? We all have mentors. We're not here just by accident. This is a lot of uh, this is a lot of uh, spending time with people who have just done it better than you, right? Better than you, smarter than you, and people who um, see that value and they want to spend that time. So obviously, like that's a huge part, and I uh, also want to take this opportunity uh, just to thank all of you, right? All of I, I have students here. Uh, you know, Kevin, Valen, or Ivory would not be here without you guys, right? You guys just pouring in that knowledge, being in our academy, uh, being able to just, you know, learn even from you guys, that's a huge part of it, and I just want to thank you guys, and give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> and uh, also, I wanted to give uh, just a quick thank you here to uh, two folks that uh, have been in my life uh, since the day of time, and, uh, <laughs> you know, they've been with me through all the ups and downs, and trust me, there was a lot of downs, you know, but they, they never gave up uh, on me, and uh, through that journey, uh, making a lot of mistakes. They, they've just always been there for me. I'm really happy, uh, you know, not to just have Karen's parents here at the doors, uh, but my parents over there and just uh, give my dad like this crazy shirt that I don't know what. They're better than I see the rock in my life and I just, I wouldn't even be here <clears throat> without them. So just want to thank you, uh, thank them a lot for uh, everything they've done for me. And I uh, also wanted to take this opportunity just to thank uh, everyone here who's came out and helped us. You know, this is a huge event. This is not just Kevin and I's event. This is like all of us, right? Uh, I want to thank Michelle and their team here for coming out and uh, spending the night here with us. Thank uh, Mr. Tony Bylas here from Tony Bylas for our videography. Thank you so much. And thank you all for the here and for having I'm going to open up the floor for about 10-15 minutes uh, for anyone who hasn't bought a book and we're going to be drawing the prize in about 15 minutes. And also I wanted to thank uh, the new member of our team, uh, Mr. Hal over there and uh, Mrs. Jula. Uh, they thank us. You guys all there are good looking faces here when you walk in. We're doing registration and uh, yeah, Hal just uh, actually joined us about a couple weeks ago so we're really excited to have him on board. Uh, he's going to be a huge part of our growth and he's going to be heading a lot of the marketing. And uh, also, Julep, she's just, uh, I think she's been with us, I don't remember, it's been over a year. She's just always there and always willing. You know, she'll just reach out and be like, hey, do you guys need help? Do you guys need help with anything? And I, that's a true sign of a leader and just humbling yourself to be here. We couldn't have done this without you. you know? So I think we got everything here, guys. Uh, what we'll do. Yes, another here, thank you, almost. 
Um, there's there was a lot of people here. It was funny when uh, Kevin and I are like, okay, hey, well, how are we going to sell, or how are we going to raise one hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars? You know, when it comes to real estate, it's easy. People's investors very good returns are lining up usually, but uh, when it comes, you know, for a cause like this, it can be a little harder. And uh, you know, we decided to do a fundraiser slash book launch, and uh, you know, we literally got on the phone. Just last week, it just goes to show you know, your net worth, right? That's your net worth of people that you have. And we spent probably a couple hours, same thing, we always do a phone zone early in the morning. This time we uh, got to sleep in a bit. And uh, we got on the phone and phoned about 15 people and they got them to sponsor our event. And I just want to thank all of them here. I think we have two sponsors here and I'd like to thank uh, Mrs. Debbie Moore from uh, Victor Custom Shirts. You want to stand up? She's no <laughs> Would you like to talk? <laughs> and uh, Miss Sasha Bouchard from French Accent Staging. Lovely to meet you over there. So, uh, I just want to thank them, you know, because we couldn't have done this fundraiser without them. And uh, they've given amazing prizes, you guys. If you haven't bought your tickets or a book, definitely uh, come, come get your book and uh, wrap the tickets. And we're going to be drawing in about, say, 10 15 minutes. Okay, thank you so much.